How many of you have ever had a dog that had a flea on him? That's everybody. You ever seen a flea? One of the smallest insects. Really small. One of the smallest insects. But for his height and size, a flea has the highest vertical leap in nature for an insect. A flea can jump, has a 36 inch vertical. A flea, man, can come 36 inches off the ground. His vertical is 36. The average person can't do that. But a flea can jump 36 inches off the ground. If you capture the flea and you put him in a mayonnaise jar and you put the lid on it, the flea know one thing. I got a 36 inch vertical. So here he go. He start jumping, but he gonna hit himself on that lid cause he got that lid on it. But after a while, after getting knocked down so many times, the flea makes an adjustment. So now the flea only jumps just to where he don't get knocked back down. He got 36 vertical, but since his lid is on, his environment got him now jumping nowhere near what he can. Capture some more fleas and put them in there. They got 36 verticals, but then they start jumping. They find out they keep getting knocked down. They start doing what the other fleas is doing. Next thing you know, I got a jar full of fleas and they ain't even using a 36 inch vertical because they got a lid on the jar. Them fleas have babies. Them babies is born into the conditions of the environment. So now guess what? The flea is born with a 36 inch vertical, but because he see his mama and daddy and all his cousins and friends jumping just barely to the roof, you know what he do? He duplicates that behavior. The flea never reaches his potential. Until you take the top off of your mayonnaise jar, you're going to duplicate your surroundings. If you take an oak tree seed and you put it in a two-foot pot, that seed will never become the oak tree that oak trees are capable of becoming because it's going to get stifled by the two-foot pot. Now check this out. Ain't nothing wrong with the seed. Seed just fell prey to the environment. You are a seed from God. God made you in his likeness. He big, he vast. Don't you allow your environment to dictate the oak tree that you become. Because ain't nothing wrong with your seed. All of y'all got this wonderful gift that he gave you at birth. All y'all got one, you better believe that now. Don't die with this gift and don't never use it. All of y'all got this wonderful gift, but you gotta use it. Take your seed, take your gift. Get away from these people that's in your life that ain't doing nothing. Get away from people in your life that's hating. Get away from your family members that ain't ever opened a business. Get away from your family members that ain't never been nowhere but to the family reunion. They ain't never been to a beach. Get away from them. Get away from them. I had to do it. When I told everybody I was getting into comedy, man, oh Lord have mercy. You can't get into comedy. You ain't even funny. How you gonna make money telling jokes? It looked like they was right. But I never gave up. All I did was identify this gift. I worked. I wrote all of my visions down. I read them every morning and every night. And I instilled them in my head. And every time I met somebody, they say, hey man, what you trying to do? I would tell them one of my visions. Somebody would always say to me, you know, I know a guy that's selling them things right there. You ought to talk to him. I started scratching stuff off my vision board. My vision board is so vast now. If I showed you what was on it, you wouldn't even believe it. Because I dream so big. One thing that can easily stunt our growth is the people that we're spending time with. You need to evaluate your friendships. The people you're eating lunch with at the office. The neighbor you're hanging out with. Are they making your life better? Pushing you higher? inspiring you to reach your dreams or are they causing you to compromise be mediocre take the easy way out you're going to become like the people you continually associate with the scripture says don't hang around angry people or you will become angry it says when you walk with wise people you will become wise 
If you want to know what you're going to be like in five years, look at your friends. If they gossip, complain about the boss, unfaithful in relationships, hard to get along with, do yourself a favor, find some new friends. Spirits are transferable. If your friends gossip, that spirit of gossip will get off on you. If your friends are critical, that critical spirit will end up on you. If your friends run around on their spouse, that unfaithful spirit will start to tempt you. You may not realize it, but they're blocking your growth. They're limiting your potential. It's not their fault. You have to make a change. But Joel, what if I hurt their feelings? What if they get upset? What if you miss your destiny? What if they keep you a five-foot cactus, so to speak, instead of the 30-foot cactus that you were created to be? How high could you rise if you weren't being shaded by compromise, by mediocrity? I know you love your friends, but your destiny is too great. Your assignment too important to hang around people that are not adding to your life. You need people that bring out the best in you. People that inspire you to do better. That challenge you to live a life of excellence and integrity. Are you under the shade of what someone spoke over you? Told you what you couldn't do? How you're not that talented? Now that shade is limiting your life? Are you under the shade of intimidation? Afraid to step out in faith? Thinking of all the things that could go wrong? Do you have friends that are blocking your growth? Causing you to compromise? Do things that are holding you back? What could you become if you got out from under that shade? How high could you go if you made some adjustments? The good news is the potential is still in you. You can still become who you were created to be. You just have to get out from under that shade. Remove what's blocking your growth and you'll begin to blossom. You'll go to new levels. There's nothing wrong with you. You have the life of Almighty God in you. He created you to rise higher, to be successful, competent, to leave your mark. I was talking to a man and he was so down on himself because of past mistakes. He went on and on telling me everything he had done wrong. He was so focused on his past that it was poisoning his future. You may have made mistakes, we all have, but don't let guilt stunt your growth. Come out from under that shade. Quit thinking about all the things you've done wrong, living in regrets, thinking you've seen your best days. When you live guilty, you're in agreement with the enemy. He's called the accuser. He'll remind you of every mistake you've made for the last 20 years. He'd love for you to go through life feeling wrong about yourself. What he's trying to do is stunt your growth. He'll do his best to keep you in the shade. He knows your potential. He knows you were created to soar. That's why he works overtime trying to make us feel guilty. Whispering, you don't measure up. You failed again. You blew your diet. You didn't spend enough time with your children. There's always some reason to be down on ourselves. You have to put your foot down and say, no thanks, I'm not living under that shade. I know I'm forgiven. I'm redeemed. My past is over. My present is secure. My future is bright.